Glória a Deus. Eu saúdo. I greet the brethren presently here and the ones that are following us through online connection with the peace of the Lord. I invite you all to stand and I invite you to open our Bibles in the book of Proverbs chapter 22 verses 1 and 2. Proverbs chapter 22, the first two verses. Proverbs 22, the f two first verses, verses. Did everybody found? The Lord of God says as follows. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches. Loving favor rather than silver and gold. The rich and the poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. Amen. The church may be seated. Brethren, through this verse, God uses his servants so he can open our understanding about choices that we normally make. Many times man abandon what is eternal, something solid and sturdy to go after things that fade away. Sometimes uh, influenced by circumstances or self-interest and sometimes a, a change or he is and he he wave on the values that was put it before him that was presented to him for things that soon will not show any value anymore in all the aspects. <coughs> God here is talking about two classes of people, the rich and the poor. But we might question, does God, when he uses Solomon, to write these verses, does the mind of God is like ours? Because if I ask you right now, to anyone, who is the rich and who is the poor? So everyone will have it, their own understanding and definition. So immediately we're going to say, the rich is the one that had abundance and the poor is the one that has nothing. Humanly talking within our reality, who is the rich? Someone that has lots of money. Someone that lives in the nice place, fancy place. He lives in New York, but he have a, a, a beach house in Florida, for example. It can be someone that has several, several realty business, several properties. Someone that has a house in Brazil, another in Europe, and so on. Someone that got a inheritance from the family. Now he's a millionaire or a billionaire. Certainly, if you ask the church, uh, the children of the church, who is the rich? 
they might give their opinion. As the one that has a nice house, I wish my father can provide that my mother didn't need to work. So the children also has their own definition of who's rich and who's the poor. As the one that is selling the lunch to eat the dinner, going after fighting, painting houses. <laughs> Every day, the, the, the homeowner complaining, redoing it, repainting. So sometimes you have a little profit, but it goes down the drain because of a complaint. And it's paying rent every month. All, all days, struggling to buy something. So he, because he bought something, it, it will be short for something else. So in sometimes you pass through someone with your, with your car and in the light, he writes, I work for food. Uh, uh, <coughs> it's worse than you. This is the poor. But does that was the intention of God when he, he left this message. No, for God that doesn't make any difference. If you have nothing or you have too much, if you share or not, God doesn't look to you checking account if it's positive or negative for God this is not important God does not see man as we see it you know who is rich for God let's read 2nd Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. For God, Jesus is the richest. And for God, poor, it's us, the whole humanity. Because the salary of the sin is death, but the free gift is the eternal life. So the, the definition for God about poverty or richness is in Jesus. Because Jesus, he left everything, eternity, to come to the world and he emptied himself for us. Only Jesus could do that. That's why the text says, the poor found the rich. What did we read? No, it was the opposite. The rich and the poor found themselves because there is an order. Because Jesus is the one that came to the world to meet the, the humankind. It was Jesus that left everything for us. For everything that he was, we also can live the poverty and receive the richness spiritually. Because for God, this is the most important thing. What is important for the Lord is if we have Jesus in our hearts. He is the richness of God. He is the love of God. He is everything that the man needs. He is the only one that satisfy the sadness, every all the sorrows that he acquired through the sinful way. God can transform everything in one thing. Salvation, eternal life. So when God talks about richness and poverty, he is correlating 
Jesus Christ to the man, to the humankind. Otherwise, nothing that we can do here will have any value. Let's see. Between the, the poverty and the richness, humanly talking, let's observe our nature. We are poor. We always been. You know why? Not even age. The Bible says that after seven years old is tiredness and fatigue. After 70, it's going down. If you reach 70, many couldn't go there. Some won't go to 60 or 50s. We have no control. Today, yesterday and today, we have an event with children, adolescents, inviting special event for them yesterday and today. But you know that many of them will not reach the next century. Have you thought about that? They did not understand, but the parents did. Many of us will not reach the next century. So imagine what a poverty. If you are here, if you are enjoying good house, good car, your checking account is fat. But any time, everything might be gone for you. And what you have will be here. After a certain age, you have no control. Not even if you have lots of money, you cannot buy health, for example. So sometimes even medicine, the science, as advanced as it is, with the God's permission, with technology, as more as he study, more he knows, but there is a disease that has no cure. Sometimes mankind lives in the situation. He has no control of anything. But you know what God compares, the richness of Jesus and God from eternity to eternity, you are God. This is to be God, to be the owner of everything. The time doesn't count for him. It's different than ours. We count the chronos from the watch every day, minutes, hours, days, every second. It's a pain because the time is going. Time is passing. The only assurance we have is the end of our lives. And every second we leave, it's one second less that we leave. But for God, is not counting. He is, He was, and He will be forevermore. This is our God, the owner of everything. He's the owner of the time. The same God that was yesterday will be today and tomorrow. You want to see another way to see the poverty that we have. You sleep tonight. And tomorrow, you might wake up with a sickness. Have to run to the hospital. You don't know how to forgive. Someone harm you. Someone hurt you. For the rest of your life, the person is in your blacklist. You you don't greet, you don't you don't salute, you don't say hi. Someone in the family, the husband don't forgive the wife, and vice versa. The father, the children, and the parents, and so on. What a difficult thing. Every day, things happening. Man make it worse in his way of live, even though knowing that the time is counting, even though that we have nothing to be proud of it, even though people don't change. But the Bible gives 
this information, the, the, the love will get cold at the end of times. Health, physical health. To go to the hospital, it's dangerous. Sometimes it's better to stay home because they will turn you upside down. So with the COVID, you cannot receive any visit and you might be there complaining. Nobody has come to me for two days or in a row. Everybody go to the hospital against the, the wheel. So look what a difficult thing because I could not receive visit in the hospital. I was there by myself like Jesus. Me, the doctors, the nurses, they taking my blood all the time. I felt I felt like Jesus alone in the cross. This is poverty. <laughs> it's a very difficult times. But look, the richness of Jesus. Look at the difference now. Look how Jesus is. Everything that he has done for us. 33 years here, living upon the earth, suffering, experiencing coldness, hunger, and the last three years of life, living a very tough ministry, he dedicated himself 100% to preach the gospel and to announce the kingdom, to explain the man that there is hope for life. Yes, there is hope to live. Even though he was arrested and he was condemned, even though his called friend, Judah, Iscariotis sold the information. I'll, I'll go there. I'll kiss him to identify him. Then you know who he is and you, you arrest him. So when Judah went there, he kissed Jesus. And what did Jesus say to him? Friend. Imagine. Who does that? Nobody. Peter. He tried to defend Jesus. He cut the, the ear of the soldier, but he was a fisherman, so he has no good aim. So instead of cutting his head, he cut just the ear, and Jesus fixed it. Jesus made the miracle. So during his moment of his arrest, they, they beat him, put a crown of thorns upon his head, condemned him unrighteously. Peter betrayed him. And at the cross, hanging on the cross, what does he say to the Father? Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. This is real love. This is richness. This is to live eternally with God. This is what God has for us. This is what God has for you tonight. We were not created to live this miserable life, poor or rich. If you if you uh, if you rich, sometimes you're poor because you have no control. The richness that you might have, that you might think you have, the humanly materialistic values, your freedom, you don't have. Because many times it can come something bad. Someone that has power upon the whole world might make a decision that change everything that you have. Everything you acquired and you saved, you left a good name, you change everything, thinking that Rich to be rich is everything. And the word of God says that the grace is the best richness. It's greater than gold and silver. Because salvation is free. By grace we saved. 
nor by the richness, nor by the, the money or silver gold. Jesus conquered death at the cross freely. And because of that, today you have access to live eternally in the arms of the Lord, singing praises to Him forevermore. Blessed be the name of Jesus for everything that He has done for us, not for our endeavors, not for ourselves, but for, because we have received the richness has found us. Jesus found you. Jesus has found me. And tonight, Jesus, the Lord is using the children, the people, to announce that Jesus is coming back. The Lord has spoken to us through the gifts of the Holy Spirit that there is a child here that always desires to be here to serve the Lord because his soul or her soul desire that, to come back to eternity. And you might say, no, what I have, I'll give to God what I have. I'll offer God what I have. You don't have anything? Whatever you have in this uh, world will pass away. You might be thinking, I'm going to give my property, my car. No, don't do that. Because what you think you have is not yours. I'll prove you. You might say, you're going to give my car. So then you park your car at the, the door of the church. You're going to give a lot of work to the church because you have to pay all the taxes, all the fees. If you don't cover this car, the rain will destroy the the weather and what you think you have and you want to give to God has no value You're gonna go away you can give the the newest car or the the newest property but if you're not there to maintain that salvation no salvation is free For, because Jesus has paid the high price Jesus has opened the, the way of salvation and he comes in our encounter and when he found us it was the best encounter ever because the death when he found the life the life prevails this is the best once Jesus was heading and he's, he crossed with the lady go into the cemetery to give the finals to his son. She was already a widow. And when these two groups found themselves, a group that was with Jesus, and the group was with the, the, the youth dead, Jesus said, stand up. You are not made to die. So this youth raised from death. Jesus touched wherever he was and he stand and he came back to life the the life has prevailed so the rich and the poor has meet because jesus always come to meet man because when you need it most in the moment of anguishing the moment of struggles and sorrows when you think that there's no solution jesus come and and brings you solution salvation through the prayer of a family but jesus will always be in the encounter of the man and nobody nobody goes to encounter man in the mo more perfect way than jesus because jesus knows us deeply intimately he knows who we are He knows what we need because he lived in the, upon this earth. He was a man we, like we are. So tonight's message is open your heart to Jesus and let him dwell in your life. The encounter tonight is being offered to you. But you have to make a decision and live with this Jesus inside your life. Take Jesus with you to your life, to your work, 
because that's the only way that you can have assurance of eternal life. That's the only way that you're going to be no more poor eternally, but you're going to be rich in the presence of God. A richness that will never end. It's a joy that never ends. It's an assurance that never ends because with Jesus, we are more than conquerors. Amen. May the Lord bless us. Jesus came and he conquered death, the worst of our enemies, and he gave us the key of victory. He gave, he granted us the eternal life. Let's stand. Let's have a word of glorification to the Lord. Blessed be your name for your grace. We are needy. 
and poor. We depend on you, O Lord. But your grace, your mercy has been sustained us. You have shown us the eternity, the one that is already prepared. We bless you. It's, it's good to depend on the God that never abandoned us for the moment, the most difficult moments. You are the one that know what is our, in our hearts. You are the one that know our lives and you know what is best for us. Blessed be your name today and forever. In the name of Jesus, amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord God, in this moment, we like to glorify your holy name and to say we love you. We want to say how grateful you are for everything that you have done for us, for have fought for us to be our helper, our friend, our savior. We want to bless you, Lord, as for one day you came and you changed our destiny. You have changed us. That's why, O oh Lord, we would like to show you how grateful we are. Glorify your name and ask you to receive this service in adoration. Every praise, every song, every demonstration of gratitude. Receive, O oh Lord. And we ask you that you can convert in blessings for us, for our families, for everything that you have provided for us. We put before your altar, O oh Lord. Receive our praises and give us a week of blessings in your presence. With the eyes of the faith, we can see the miracles and the wonders to see your angels ministering in our favor so your church can be always have a praise in their lips. That's our praise. In the name of Jesus, amen. And in your name we say, may the grace, the wonderful grace, of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our God, our Father, the sweet and tender consolations and the gifts of the Holy Spirit can be poured out upon us now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. The Lord has shown about a child that has trying to announce salvation to, the, to her parents, to his parents, and showing the desire to be here, closer to the Lord. So this desire came from the Holy Spirit. It's not a coincidence, it's not a circumstance, it's not in vain, but the Lord is working within your son or your daughter's life so you can have this encounter with Jesus as well and that you can stay in fellowship. To be in the, in the house of the Lord is to be in fellowship with the Father, God the Father, and to enjoy all the benefits, to be the son or the children of God. So this family can understand and, and embrace this message and give worth to this opportunity. God has control of everything. And he has a blessing for your life. Let's be praying for the seminar. Two weeks from now, three, four, and five. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Two weeks, right after the next weekend. So let's be praying. It's close to Orlando. Whoever didn't sign up yet, today is the last day. Don't miss it. Look for the the leader of your assistance group. There is a few vacants. Let's do it quickly. I like to the 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 people that came to my house to visit me when I have my surgery, because of the pandemics, nobody could go to the hospital. And I thank the church for the prayers, for the visits. And if I'm here, 
I'm not ready for another one. Next time, I'm not going to the hospital. I suffered three days running from the hospital, but when I was there, <laughs> I couldn't run anymore. Hospital, certain age, it's for, for the, the elders, it's not good. I'm running from the hospital. Do everything so you don't need to go to the hospital. Peace of the Lord to everyone. Cheers. <laughs>